Um, I'll try not to pontificate if I can, uh, if I can. But by fair disclosure, I need to say that I spent uh, 20 years of my career uh, designing dry storage casks, getting them certified, getting them built and delivered, including at uh, the Millstone site, which which you know very well. Does anybody on this panel um, know? Uh, does anybody on the panel know? Uh, what the impact would be on the pools if you were to remove all of the fuel uh, that was five years or older, which has been recommended in your publications. What do you mean by, what would be the impact if you remove? I don't understand. Yes, what would be the impact on the pool? There would be a number of impacts. First of all, by removing all of that fuel that's been out of the reactor for more than five years, you would replace it with water. So there'd be more water in the pool, so if inventory was lost or cooling of the pool was lost, there'd be more water in there, more inertia to absorb the heat to, that's being produced by the spent fuel in the pool to give the operators more time to restore cooling or provide makeup for loss of inventory. In addition, one of the problems in, in densely packed spent fuel pools is criticality protection. The, in the old days, you used geometry to protect against criticality of the fuel at nuclear chain reaction in the spent fuel pool. When they went to high density racks, geometry no longer provided that protection, right. so they added a neutron absorber to prevent criticality of the spent fuel in the pools. Aging has shown that that neutron absorber doesn't last very long. We've had problems with gravity, calling it to fall to the bottom of the pools. It's dissolved into the water itself. If you remove the fuel, you got more water, you've got more space, you could spread out the, the surviving fuel, the remaining fuel, and reestablish geometry as protection against criticality. So you're dealing with the risk of meltdown of the fuel or the fire of the fuel in the spent fuel pool. You're reducing the probability, you're reducing the consequences, you're reducing the risk. You're also better protecting against the other casualty, which is a criticality in the spent fuel pool. So it's a, it's a, there's a lot to gain and very little to lose. I'd also add that if uh, the worst happened, you would have a far uh, less consequences because you would have uh, less radiation going out. Uh, the, the most of what uh, you said uh, is correct in terms of uh, making uh, Im improvements, uh, but uh, we need to, uh, to correct the fact that uh, at, uh, at Fukushima, the pools did not uh, contribute. They survived as well as the, the dry casks did on the site, and I'm a fan of dry casks. Uh, however, I've, I've run the numbers on Fukushima, and if, you, if we did what you suggested and removed all of the fuel that is uh, five years or older, it would have reduced the heat load in that pool by less than 6%, which is a trivial amount. It would not have impacted uh, the sequence of events that took place at all. If you take a look at the, uh, the, the heat loads in the pools in the United States, yes, they are densely packed, but the number of assemblies is far less important than the number of kilowatts of heat that are being generated. And removing the five-year-old and older fuel has almost no impact on that heat load because of the exponential decay. The heat load is driven almost entirely by the last discharge. And you cannot remove that fuel to dry storage uh, for at least three to five years. So you can't really do a great deal of mitigation uh, by removing all of that fuel. I'd be happy to sell you the casks if you want to do it, but I don't think it's going to uh, make uh, that much of an improvement. You're right about the, the neutron absorbers. You're talking about boroflex. That was another horrible mistake. Uh, that ma material is not being used in pools anymore. The materials that are being used now uh, are going to stand up. Uh, they're solid materials, and they're not going to fall apart the way the boroflex did. I'd like to respond to that in a few cases because I disagree with just about everything. The <laughs> Fukushima, the spent fuel pools did survive, but you've got to recall that the reactor buildings blew up, which provided pathways for helicopters to drop water into the spent fuel pools and water cannon to shoot water from below. Hopefully in our reactors we don't blow up reactor buildings in order to provide the cooling makeups to the spent fuel pools. That's not the way to solve the problem. Second of all, yes, the heat load is I do agree with this. The heat load is dominated by the fuel that's been coming out of the reactor in the last five years. But again, the fuel that you're taking out, I agreed with that. That was the one thing I agreed with. And Fukushima did have a problem. I did agree with that also. The, but taking out the older fuel, you're, again, you're replacing it with water. Fukushima only had about one reactor core's worth of fuel. That's far less than reactors in the United States have. The average reactor in the United States, according to the NRC, has more than three times mm -hmm. as much fuel in the spent fuel pool. So it's, 
There are a number of reasons that Fukushima's lessons learned, unless you design the plants to blow up the reactor buildings, can't be attributed to the reactors in the United States. In addition, even if you're absolutely true that the heat load isn't changed at all, let's say it doesn't change at all, which isn't true, but let's say that. I'll, I'll give it away, it doesn't change at all. There's no change at all. Removing the fuel out of the pool reduces the consequences, as Mary said. It re if there is a problem, the fact that there's fewer fuel assemblies in the pool means that the radioactive cloud is much, much smaller. That's the consequence part of the risk right. equation. Probability may be the same. I think it improves that you reduce the probability, but let's fix it for a moment. You're significantly reducing the consequences. When you multiply those together, you significantly reduce the risk. So I'll buy a lot of your cask if the nuclear waste fund will be available to better protect Americans.